Hi, welcome. Welcome to listen to a lab 10 minutes short lecture. This lecture is about ductless storage cabinet. What do you need to know? Ductless filtration storage cabinet, how it works. A ductless storage cabinet consists of the main storage cabinet with a layer of HEPA filters to remove powders chemicals followed by a molecular activated carbon filter for vapors or gaseous chemicals together with a suction uh, fan or blower so the air is continuously sucking in um, through the cabinets and being filtered off the benefit of having a ductless storage cabinet is that it is easy and fast installations. The installation can be done in just 30 to 40 minutes. Unlike a ducted storage cabinets, which required uh, a lot more engineering work and it's more complicated because it involves ducting systems and also the lab should supply sufficient air intake in order to achieve a certain pressure and also the air balance in the lab. Ductless storage cabinet can be installed at any workstation. The smaller system can also be installed underneath a lab bench or on top on the bench. No limitation in the number of ductless storage cabinets since they don't need air supply from outside in order to work. Dallas storage cabinets consume very little energy because it does not, does not uh, remove aircon air from the buildings. So potentially, it will help you to save at least 10,000 ringgit per year per unit of storage cabinet. How does a Dallas storage cabinet protect a chemist? First of all, it needs to comply to international standards. For example, like the Europe or French NFX 15211 and USA CFR 9 standards. Number two, um, there's, there are four main requirements uh, for a proper ductless storage cabinet. Number one is the filter's efficiency, how well the filter protect or remove um, how well the filter remove the hazardous chemicals. Number two, the filter's capacity. How much, how, in how many grams of the chemicals can be retained in the filters. Number three, the supplier should provide the application validation for their storage cabinet. And lastly, is the use of lever uh, to provide information um, to alert the user. First, the filter's efficiency. So the concentrations downstream from the filters show not more than 1% of the PLTWA of the chemicals handed. Uh, this is in line with the country regulations. For example, in Malaysia, we have used regulations. Specifically in Schedule 1, it specified the PLTWA for the chemical um, use. Example of PELTWA, it is very, very much from chemical to chemicals and they are expressed in PPN for liquid chemicals or milligram per cubic meter for powder chemicals. Chemical with high toxicity, example like formaldehyde, has a PLTWA of 0.3 part per billion. Uh, chemicals with average toxicity like carbon tetrachloride has a PLTWA of 5 ppm and chemical with low toxicity like the common methanol the PLTWA is 200 ppm so you can see from here the lower the PLTWA of a chemical the higher its toxicity level PLTWA is published separately for each individual chemicals you can find them in SDS safety data sheets 
section number eight. But in reality, most of the laboratory handle more than one type of chemicals. So when there's a mixture of chemicals, the effect is unknown. But one thing for sure, it is danger. So how do we handle when there's a mixture of chemicals or mixture of PLTWA? International standards specify that a ductless filtration storage cabinet should only exhaust of maximum 1% of the PLTWA of a chemical handle or chemical store in the cabinet, which means it is 100 times below the authorized concentration. This translates to a safety uh, for the user and safety of the, air, of the air quality in the laboratory. Number two, the filter capacity of a ductless storage cabinet. The manufacturer should publish the quantity of chemical retained in the filter. Example in China specified that the manufacturer should provide at least 20 chemicals listing. Whereas for standard like NFX 15211, the manufacturer should publish as much as possible the chemical listings. There's no limit set for that. You can ask us more for a full chemical listings. Here's an example of the chemical listings. The manufacturer will provide uh, information set how many grams of that specific chemicals the filter can retain. Example here, uh, if the, the ductless storage cabinet has one column, one layer of activated carbon, this is the amount of the chemicals in gram the filter can absorb. Whereas if you have two layers, the first layer can absorb even more as what published here. Number three, the application validation. A responsible manufacturer should provide a validation for the, the list or the type of chemicals you store in the ductless storage cabinet. And they should approve it and responsible for it. Once you fill up this questionnaire, um, the manufacturer will validate it and to ensure the system that provided is suitable for the storage of your chemicals. Lastly, the use of labor. The label is to display on the storage cabinet. The label will provide information that like chemicals are authorized to be stored in these cabin cabinets. Number two, the expected future lifetime and the detection system applicable for this uh, storage cabinet. Make sure the suppliers will be able to verify it or revalidate it uh, anytime in near future whenever you change the chemicals uh, you want to store in the cabinet. The ductless storage cabinet is designed to operate 24-7, 365 days a year. It is to continuously protect the chemicals and also protect the user. A filtration storage cabinet filters not only the chemicals escaping from the bottles um, stored in the cabinet, but also the air in the laboratory. So basically you kill two birds with one stone. You improve the air quality in the lab. But nevertheless, uh, if your, um, your storage area is much polluted, um, it will affect um, the filter lifetime. Typical filter uh, lifetime for a ductless storage cabinet is one year, some can go to two years. How do we validate um, the efficiency of the filters? What are the um, services required to maintain a storage cabinet? There's two ways. The first way is to install automatic filter saturation detection system, which provided by Erlab. This will save a lot of your time uh, because the sensors will provide alert whenever the filter is saturated. 
The second method, which is more common, is to have a regular uh, schedule preventive maintenance where the supplier equips with a calibrated PID meter, which is the um, VOC detectors, to monitor um, to ensure the filter has not reached the saturation point. Once it reached the saturation point, the filters are advised to be replaced. In order to use the storage cabinet properly, uh, the supplier will recommend a chemical segregation procedures. These are some of the examples of the ductless storage cabinets and also the segregations, the, the arrangement of chemicals in the storage cabinet. Small example. This is just a first short introduction for the safety of a filtration storage cabinet. Contact us to learn more. Thanks for the time to listen to this short lecture. Do visit our website at tms-lab.com.